Google is turning to nuclear energy to keep up with the demands of artificial intelligence. The company announced a deal Monday with energy startup Keros Power to purchase electricity from seven small modular nuclear reactors, which still need to be built. The first of those reactors would come online in 2030. They'll be used to power Google's data centers, which process huge amounts of digital information, but they require a lot of energy to do so. A recent study found that by 2026, data centers across the globe will consume more than 1,000 terawatt hours of electricity, which means what? Well, that's about the same amount as the entire nation of Japan. Hank Jenkins Smith joins me now. He's a professor of public policy at the University of Oklahoma. Thanks so much for being with us. First question, why do data centers require so much power? Data centers use, um, of course, servers. Servers are made up of a, of a variety of different components, chiefly uh, CPUs or uh, processing units, um, graphic processing units, uh, and RAM uh, energy. All these are really dense uh, components that fill those boxes that you can see on the screen there. Um, those boxes then have extremely uh, rapidly moving electrons moving through them, handling many, many computations. Data being moved in, data being managed, um, data being processed. Um, and so that process generates a lot of resistance. The resistance in those components generates heat that bleeds off into the unit. And you've felt that um, with your phone or your laptop when they get hot um, because of the um, the heat bleeding off of the operations of those CPUs. Um, so what happens then is the, the this excess heat needs to be carried off. So it's taken out through various kinds of cooling systems. Um, those take a lot of electricity. Um, and remember, there's there's thousands of those CPU or those uh, uh, processors within any given um, uh, data center. Um, each data center uses about the same amount of electricity. I guess the typically someplace between 5,000 and 20,000 households worth of electricity being uh, running through there at a given time. Um, and that needs to be running 24-7. Yeah. They can't afford for the power to break down because heat would build up, it would cause blackouts and uh, uh, loss of that uh, processing power, and they run they run 24-7. So it's, a, it's quite an enterprise. It takes a lot of electricity to run those units. I love that description. Okay, you can help me understand something else, which is what is a small modular nuclear reactor? Is this something I could have in the backyard? Um, not quite. <laughs> like a traditional nuclear reactor, uh, a small modular reactor or an SMR, as they're often referred to, um, uh, uses a radioactive source to generate heat that runs, that produces steam that runs a generator um, that creates electricity. Um, the difference is an SMR is a fraction of the size of a traditional reactor. Um, these uh, are typically built uh, within a, or they plan to build these things within a factory rather than on site. Um, so they move the reactors themselves into the facility um, on the site, and, and the facility can be um, uh, below ground. But the, the advantage of the factory construction is they have a lot of control over uh, the quality of the construction, um, the reliability of the system, the safety of the system. Um, many of these reactors also run at much lower pressure than is the case with traditional reactors. So you don't have those high um, uh, uh, pressure uh, vessels that have to sustain um, a lot of heat and corrosion. Um, and uh, they are uh, typically referred to as um, fail-safe. They don't break down. They don't need humans to intervene to keep them going. And uh, last question, does fail-safe mean they are safe? And if so, do you expect more companies are going to turn to these kinds of uh, operations? Well, we don't have a whole lot of data on how safe they are because they're new. Um, like any new technology, they have features that are designed to have uh, enormous advantages. And uh, and most of the consensus is that these are going to be um, serious advantages. It's a smaller source term, so there's less radioactivity to throw around, less pressure, um, more capability to uh, maintain these systems. Um, they basically can load them on the back of a truck and, uh, uh, and you know, the components and haul them back to the factory for, um, for cleaning out. But when we get more experience with these things, we'll have a better idea for how safe they really are. As to will they be used, there's an awful lot of movement 
toward using SMRs, not just with Google, but with Microsoft, uh, with um, Amazon, and a variety of other entities that are really thinking seriously about shifting to, uh, to nuclear power and SMRs in particular. Professor Hank Jenkins-Smith with the University of Oklahoma, thank you so much. You're so welcome, John.